I want to say something just before we get started. I have not known too very much about Islam. I do not say that with any type of pride, but I have to be honest. In the last few months, I have studied Islam somewhat, and I'll admit I've only scratched the surface. Back some, I guess it must have been about two years ago now, I made a derogatory statement over television about the Quran. If you were not listening that particular week, I'm never going to tell you what it was. I wonder if it's ever been explained how many passages in the Quran, and it, it is a beautiful book. Literarily, it's unequal. But how many stories were plagiarized from Jewish fables and folklore? I wonder. And he said he prayed in the name of Mohammed come out of him. I ask him, what happened? Nothing. He prayed several times in the name of Mohammed, come out of it. But I remind you as I close this, a dead man cannot produce miracles. I want to say it again, a dead man cannot produce miracles. Jesus Christ is alive. I want to look for a moment at the alleged contradictions or variations found in the Word of God. And from this, I want to prove to you that this is the Word. In 2 Samuel 24 and 4 and 1 Chronicles 21 and 1, it mentions that God provoked David, 2 Samuel. Satan provoked David, 1 Chronicles. It seems like a contradiction. Of course, anyone that studies the Word of God knows that God is said to do things oftentimes that He only allows to be done. To be honest with you, there's evidence in the Quran that the same thing was done by God. I want to say that again. There's no contradiction here. God oftentimes, in the Old Testament especially, is placed in a position of being responsible for something when He only allows it to be done. And in reality, He is responsible in effect when you think of that. In an explanation about the contradictions in the Bible, whether Satan provoked David or the Lord provoked David, he said, look, this is, we attribute it to God. That though the devil did it, we say God did it. On that basis, would we be prepared to concede that God had those six million Jews incinerated because Hitler did it? We say because God intended it. This is what he wanted to do. So God is responsible for the massacre or the incineration of six million Jews or even 600,000, or even 6,000, is dramatic enough. If, they, if Hitler did it, could we say God did it? Are you going to blame God for that? You're going to exonerate Hitler and the Nazi party because they said God did it? No, dear brother Swagat, we don't think like that. If a criminal has done such and such a thing, we say it is his action, he's responsible. We don't say God did it. Because eventually the power comes from God, but God has given you that free will to think and, and to see right from wrong. So if you do wrong, you are responsible. You can't hold God responsible. So either David was provoked by the Satan or by the Lord. And Satan and Lord are not synonymous terms in any religion. They are opposites. Satan and the God Almighty are opposite things. 
1 Kings 4 and 26, it speaks of 40,000 stalls, Solomon's grandeur. 2 Chronicles 9, 25, 4,000 stalls re relating the same incident, and we would have to think, isn't that a contradiction? It is. Plain, pure, and simple. It relates the same story. There are several incidents in the Word of God stating the same identical thing in various different ways where one account will be given and the number will be slightly changed. Another account will be given, it'll say 2,000, and then Second Chronicles or First Chronicles 3,000 or whatever. In any book claiming to be from God, that book will be free from contradictions. Like, for example, the example the brother gave, I repeat that. I said, look, it says in one of the books, Solomon had 4,000 stalls of horses. Another one says he had 40,000 stalls of horses. And 4 in 40 is only the difference of a zero. So you say, I said, you know, my cousins, the Jews, they didn't know the zero when they wrote the book. They didn't know. It's my Arab brothers who found it from my fathers in India and they shared it to the world, zero. The Jews didn't know. They wrote this in words. Four, F-O-U-R, four. In Hebrew, of course. Forty, F-O-R-T-Y, forty. I said, now who made the mistake? God or the writer? And they were not saved. We are told that they were not saved from mistakes. Mrs. Ellen G. White, you say she's a cultist, Mrs. Ellen G. White, the prophetess of the Seventh-day Adventist movement, She says in her Bible commentary, I have the book here. In her Bible commentary, she says, she has no motives to lie. She believes in the Bible to be the inspired word of God. And yet she says, she says the Bible we, have re we read today is the work of many copyists who have in most instances done the work with marvelous accuracy. In most instances, she, they have done their work with marvelous accuracy. But copies have not been infallible. And God, most, mo, and God most evidently has not seen fit to preserve them altogether from error. God didn't see fit. In other words, this is, this is his business, God's business. If he wants to see fit, if he wants to do a thing, he does it. If he doesn't, he says, look, go to hell. That's your business. So God didn't see fit to preserve them from making errors. In transcribing, in the following pages of her commentary, Mrs. White testifies further, I saw that God had specially guarded the Bible. 